So I woke up very early this morning and I was very confused. AI, Air India, or Americans and Indians. Today I'll talk about artificial intelligence, where we have been, where we are, and where we are going. You know, over the last year, we have all been bombarded with AI. How many of you have used ChatGPT? Almost all of you. How many use ChatGPT every day? 50% of you. Right? ChatGPT and AI have made it so much easier for us to do day-to-day -day things. But we should step back, maybe take a 100-year view. Let's start with the internet. You know, the internet was founded in 1973. It took almost 10 years for the first browser, for the Mosaic browser, and then Netscape to, turn, to come around. Internet was puttering around. Once the browser came, TCP IP got the UX, and we saw the growth. If we look at mobile, the same thing happened. Actually, this year is the 50th anniversary of the mobile phone. Mobile phone, first mobile phones came out in 1973. It was not until the iPhone that we had the browser moment for the phone. We got a real UX. And then we have seen what happened over the last couple of decades. AI has actually been around much, much before the internet and mobile. The first instances of AI can be traced to the 1950s. It took 60 or 65 years for AI to get its browser moment, the iPhone moment. When ChatGPT came out in November last year, we got the UX. AI has been puttering around, and now you and I can interact with it. My prediction is over the next decade, AI will be bigger than mobile and internet. It will be faster than mobile and internet. We truly live in the era of possibility. There has been an invisible storm. We are in the midst of the creator evolution and we are at the cusp of what's yet to come. So let's take it one at a time. Many of you might know Alan Turin. He asked the question, can machines think like humans? And the Turin test was born. The Turin test is you have two different rooms. One has a human, another has a machine and it's a blind test, can you tell the difference? This was in the 1950s. And then many of us saw the movie Electric Dreams. The question was, can machines feel like a human? If you haven't watched the movie, Tonight is the Night, there was a love triangle, a man, a woman, and the computer. So machines think like a human, feel like a human. And then I remember in 1997, all of us were mesmerized on TV. This is probably the first moment when around the world, all of us were watching on TV how AI was defeating the then global champion, Gary Kasparov. 
AI was better than human. You know, over the last two decades, every time you go to Netflix and search for a movie, every time you shop something on Amazon, every time you take an Uber ride, every time you search on Instagram Reels, you are using AI. We don't think of them as AI, but you are using AI. Heck, every time you go to Google search, you are using AI. So AI is part of our everyday lives. We use it many, many times every day. We haven't thought about it as AI. It has been the invisible stone. Enter ChatGPT. ChatGPT brought the browser moment, the iPhone moment. ChatGPT and Google Bard and other assistants are fueling the creator revolution. You know, over the last year, these are all the movie covers. Everybody's talking about AI. Every conference is talking about AI. Every earnings report is talking about AI. Every tech discussion and beyond discussion, we are talking about AI. AI is everywhere. And it's turning us into creators. You can use text to write a poetry, create art, generate a video, do animations, even write your PowerPoint presentation. This presentation was written by my AI co-pilot. AI is making each one of us a creator, and it is turning us into programmers. You know, yesterday, when hardware was not really there, you had to learn Python and C++ and other programming languages. Today, with a very powerful computer, if you can type, if you can talk to your chatbot, you can program. We were with Jensen Huang, the founder and CEO of NVIDIA this past weekend. And he was telling us he had visited India the week before. He was with Prime Minister Modi. They spent 90 minutes talking about the AI revolution and how we can benefit in India, each one of us. So very exciting. We are in the creator revolution. Each one of us is one, but perhaps the best is yet to come. We are at the cusp of what some people call the age of abundance. You know, Ray Dalio is the founder of Bridgewater, the, the largest hedge fund anywhere in the world. He, he was talking about AI just a couple of days ago. He described AI as mind-blowing, and he predicted by the end of the decade, maybe we, we have to work only for three days a week. So the age of abundance, it will touch each one of us. It will touch every vertical, every industry. Let's take a few examples. Healthcare. You know, there was a very nice session around healthcare yesterday. Every speaker talked about AI and healthcare. Healthcare has not really changed for the past many decades. With AI, you can get personalized treatments. You can discover drugs for diabetes and cancer and other uncured diseases. It, it really changes how we live our day-to-day -day life. Let's look at education. Education has not changed for the past many decades. With AI, we can get one-to-one -one tutoring. 
we can give AI tools to teachers so they can be more effective in the classroom. Self-driving cars. You know, I think I'm a good driver, but I couldn't drive in Bangalore with all kinds of traffic. Um, with self-driving cars, you can. It will make going from point A to point B that much safer, that much more efficient. And of course, climate. Global warming is real. AI can help us identify the root causes and solve them. I'm in India. Agriculture is the largest profession. Imagine using AI and robots and drones and sensors to make life that much easier for the farming population. If we can improve the yield of crops, everybody benefits. If some of you are thinking, will AI take my job? AI will take your job to the next level. AI will make you 30%, 50%, 100% more productive. If you don't embrace AI, that may not be good. So let me um, close with what's happening in India, the opportunity in India. You know, India became the most populous country just recently, overtaking China. We have 1.4 billion creators. If you look at the data, 22 languages, 20,000 dialects, multiple religions, that's a rich data mine. If you look at the resources, beyond the natural resources, if you look at graduates, you know, when I went to university here, there were five IITs. Now there are 23 IITs. As I was doing the research, um, I discovered there are 1,200 universities in India. They churn out 1.5 million engineering graduates every year. We are graduating 67,000 new doctors every year. Imagine the possibilities. We are all in this moment of time. We have this opportunity. We must seize it. We must lead with AI in India. So in summary, we truly live in the era of possibility. And it is for each one of us to build on it. Thank you very much. Thank you.